It's time once again to add to the most storied basketball rivalry in the great state of Idaho. Without a doubt, this matchup has peaked once again as both Colby Blaine and Paul Rush have ignited their programs. The College of Idaho is coming off back-to-back -back Final Four appearances at the national tournament and are currently ranked number three in the country. Meanwhile, in year number three of the Paul Rush era over at Northwest Nazarene, the Nighthawks cracked the 20-win plateau for the first time in nearly 20 years and clinched the program's third ever win at the GNAC Championships. Recently, home court has meant everything in this matchup. Over the last four years, the Yotes and Nighthawks have split the season series, with each team successfully impressing in front of their respective fan bases. Tonight, the matchup returns to Nampa, and we're about to find out if the Yotes can break the recent trend on the road, or if the Nighthawks can keep bragging rights for at least one more week. It's time to tip off the 207th edition of the United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup, only on Idaho's very own 24-7. College basketball is coming your way on Idaho's very own 24-7. The oldest basketball rivalry in Idaho tips off tonight in Canyon County. Seven Sports presents the United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup. Welcome inside the Johnson Sports Center where we are getting set the 207th edition of the United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup between the College of Idaho and Northwest Nazarene. Welcome to the floor alongside Brian King. I'm Jay Tuss. This rivalry might be at an all-time high, and a big reason why is you have two local guys leading each of these programs, Brian. Jay, I think it's a big deal. Paul Rush, Colby Blaine, two fantastic young coaches who've got great records between them. They've co coached almost every young kid in this valley. <laughs> it just adds to the intensity of this rivalry. I couldn't agree more. We start off with NNU. They have a lot to replace. Four out of their top five scores are gone from a year ago. You'll notice new guys like Ezekiel Alley as well as George Reedy contributing tonight. But one guy that really has to be big, especially on offense, is Sam Roth. We've always known him that he can be a good defender, but he's got to take a step offensively as well he really does he's really the only returning guard that they have with some experience he'll have to play well he'll have to defend he'll have to knock down his shot mm -hmm. which he's capable of but he's gonna have to provide some leadership tonight as well He's got to play against a guy named Talon Pickney on the other side, so he's got his hands full. Talon was an All-American last year. He's off to a great start this year. Colby Blaine does have some experience back, but a young guy he needs to take a step is Jalen Galloway, a guy that can provide some size in the middle. Yeah, from Mountain View High School in Boise, big player, um, second year, has played well, had 17 the other night. He's averaging 14. He'll come off the bench tonight, but he's going to have to give some energy and some big minutes against those bigger bodies, friend, and you. Well, believe it or not, this is the 17th game <laughs> that we've called together in this rivalry. Early on, NNU dominated it. Then C of I had their turn taking the Mayor's Cup back to Caldwell. But over the last four years, split right down the middle between these two. We expect another great matchup. Tip-off between Northwest Nazarene and the College of Idaho coming up next. All right, we are moments away from tip-off between the College of Idaho and Northwest Nazarene University. The oldest rivalry in basketball in our great state of Idaho about to tip off for the 207th time. Take a look at the starting lineups. We begin with the visiting Yotes, Jake Bruner, into the lineup, along with Ricardo Time, a newcomer. Talon Pinckney, it seems like he's been around forever. He's a reigning All-American. Connor Desanye into the starting lineup tonight, along with Nate Bruniel. And, of course, their leader is Colby Blaine. Brian back for his second season as a head coach. What impressed you about the first season taking over uh, at the College of Idaho, Brian? You know, I think Colby's maturity is what's so impressive. Is It feels like he's been doing this for 20 years. He's been a head coach for two, obviously coached a long time. But his program is mature and disciplined. And then you have NNU starting lineup, Beto Diaz, back in the lineup along with Spider Atatunji. Redshirt freshman Jalen Fox will look to provide this team with a spark. And then you have Sam Roth, the program guy, the glue guy. He's got to get this thing all together and moving forward. And finally, another redshirt freshman in George Reedy, who is off to a great start so far this season. A superb athlete. You'll hear his name plenty on tonight's broadcast. As for their leader, Paul Rush, back for his third season out here in Nampa. And I personally love the way that he is trying to build a culture out here. And the key word is love because that's the way that he's trying to form a bond between these guys, Brian. 
Yeah, NNU is so fortunate, and C of I as well, to have such high caliber coaches right here in Canyon County. The one thing we know about Paul Rush, his kids will play hard. Yep. They will fight. They will bring it right back if they're down. This is going to be a dogfight. And it's, you know, it's basketball season, right? This is fantastic. The best time of year. You see that in terms of records, the C of I holds the upper hand in this rivalry. However, the Mayor's Cup is here in Nampa with the Nighthawks. And over the last four years, it's been the home team that has defended their home floor. So we'll see if the Yotes can either break that trend tonight or if NNU can defend their home floor. One thing I will say is the Nighthawks have a strong student section at tonight's ball game. Last year, this game took place during Thanksgiving break. So now it takes place a little earlier, and the stands are jam-packed behind us. Tip-off underway, NNU. Uh, Loses the opening tip. Talon picked me up over half court. The Yotes have the ball. And you can hear that NNU student section right off the bat. Vermeil is going to drive baseline. Looking for help. Guarded by Sam Roth out of the gate. Now Pickney with an 11 on the shot clock. Aggressive man to man. That's a Paul Rush team. They're going to defend. And defend aggressively. The shot clock resets. As Bruno comes away with it, goes baseline, kicks it back out to Verniel, thinks about a three. He's going to drive the floater, a little bit of contact. To Sonye into the starting lineup tonight and making an early impact with the tip. In the pretty pretty athletic the play by Connor, too. Thought off a guy, got up. Nice tip in. You see a little, little passive pressure there by C of I. They want to slow tempo down a little bit. They'll do that often. Back to their zone. George Reedy's going to drive in now. Looking for a little bit of help. Spider Atatunji out over to Beto Diaz to three. Misses. Ricardo time with the rebound. Hands it off to Talon Pinkney. A big key for NNU early in this game is not taking quick threes. Working it through on offense and getting quality shots. When past games, Jay, C of I typically gets off to a pretty good start. NNU lags a little bit, and then they come back. The fadeaway on the baseline by Talon Pinkney. One thing you will notice about his game this year, he is much improved offensively as a shooter, showing it off right there. Again, you saw that kind of 2-1-2, full court, kind of a passive pressure, just to tempo things a little bit. Back to their zone. Good pass, down low to Roth. Up and under, makes it home. He's going to head to the free throw line. That was a great patient offensive possession there by NNU. Got the look they want. Yeah, they really did. And kind of unusual for Roth not to be out behind the uh, behind the three-point line. They snuck him into the high post. See if we get a second look here. Oh, that's a good finish. Got the body. Hits the free throw as well. Can't say enough about Sam Roth and their two exhibition games, averaging right around 15 points a game. Had a great game against Wyoming in Laramie. A big offensive outburst for him. It wasn't quite enough, but definitely an encouraging showing by the redshirt junior. Spider Atatunji contests the shot as Nate Verniel tries to take it in, and Verniel is going to get a pair of free throws out of it. Smart play by Verniel against this aggressive man-to-man -man overplaying defense. You're going to have to drive it hard, and you're going to have to drive it off. If you're passive, they're going to eat you up. You know, we saw Nate Verniel go to his left right there, but one thing Coach Rush, excuse me, one thing Coach Blaine said about his senior leader this year is he's really improved on going to his right, which will make him more of a dynamic score. He hits both free throws, and the Yokes lead 6-3 early. Little floater by Beto Diaz gets it to fall. Well, that was a really good possession for the Nighthawks. They handled the press really aggressively. Down low to Desanya. He's going to go at Spider. A little ball thing. Hook shot. Rattles out. Spider with the rebound. Boy, unfortunate for Desanya. That was a great move inside. Yotes back to the zone. Fade away by Diaz. Barely draws iron. Time with the rebound. Time to Bruner. Bruner for three. Rattles it in. The 
and Jay, both of these teams are so fundamentally sound. If you make a mistake, like right there, you're going to pay for it. That's the red for shirt freshman, George Reedy, passing it off to Spider out of Tunji for the easy layup. Nighthawk back within two. As we're about three and a half minutes into the 207th edition of the United Harris Insurance Mayor's Cup. Boy, good pressure by NNU. They just are not letting the Yotes have any daylight. Five on the shot clock. Let's good get pass. Back to Bruner. A deep three, and he hit. Boy, good offense set up by Talon Pickney. It's a good basketball game, Jay. Holy smokes. Bruner showing off his improved offensive skill set. He's always been a hustle guy, crashes the glass, but early on, demonstrating that he is an improved shooter with a couple of threes. Diaz. Tries for raid one and misses. Yotes getting ready for a mass substitution over here. Ready to bring in four. Brunel, another three. The Yotes heating up early from distance. Boy, not uncommon. C of I just comes out strong. Every year we do this game, they get a big lead early. Coach Rush warned me about the C of I shooters. He said that Coach Blaine's got some new guys this year, but he knows they're going to be able to shoot. They've uh, obviously shown that off early in this game. So early on, the Yokes off to a hot start offensively. They lead NNU 15-7. to We send you out to break, though, with another look at that last offensive bucket here by Nate Brunel. Boom. Great start to this ball game as the Yotes are out to a 15-7 lead. Hey, the Caldwell Family YMCA is dedicated to healthy living, social responsibility, and youth development. Supporting the Caldwell Family YMCA is a key objective for United Heritage Insurance, the College of Idaho, and Northwest Nazarene University. The Mayor's Cup is pleased to recognize the Caldwell Family YMCA for its positive impact to the community out here in Canyon County. Ball tipped away out of bounds. It's going to stay with NNU. Coach Rush said uh, this morning that one thing they had to do was run the Yotes off the three-point line in order to have success tonight. Early on, Brian, the College of Idaho, three of three from distance. Don't want them to get going early on if you're Coach Rush and the Nighthawks. No, and they've all been really good looks, you know. It's not like they've been under duress. Oh, good take. We've seen some more methodical offense from the College of Idaho early on, but a quick transition bucket as Ricardo Tom gets into the scoring column. The Yokes, six of nine from the floor out of the gate. Boy, they just play with such confidence, too. No doubt. Deep three from Caden Wright, the local product out of Skyview High School. He misses, but a whistle under the bucket. Foul's going to go against Ricardo Time, trying to haul in that rebound. Beto Diaz to the bench. Zach Ferguson, the Eagle High alumnus, into the game for NNU. Well, keep your eye on Caden Wright, number three from Skyview. He may be the best outside shooter on this team. He does, he's not afraid. He thought about <laughs> it right there. He thought about it. Another key piece for this NNU team that will get better as the season goes along is number 11, Ezekiel Alley, who just came into the contest. He's going to get an open look from the corner for three. Misses. NNU's had some good looks. Those will go down later. Talon Pickney drives, kicks it over to... Miles Williams, the floater off the rim. Galloway battles for the loose rebound, gets it. And the Yotes can't capitalize. Galloway again, diving out of bounds, saves it. Pickney under the rim for the reverse layup. There's your energy guy off the bench. Jalen Galloway with two offensive rebounds, and the final one ends up in points for the Yotes. That's just, those are hustle plays right there, right? He just said, I'm going to get those. Galloway, a local kid, starred over at Mountain View High School, was actually recruited heavily by both of these programs, but as you can tell, ended up choosing the Yokes. Said he felt the love out there in Caldwell and ended up playing for Colby Blaine. Look at Sam Roth out there with two inside buckets. I thought he was the outside guy. The lead back 
down to 10 for the Yotes. Jalen Galloway for three. Ezekiel Alley with the rebound. He's going to push. Well, these guys, they drive, you know, they drive it hard. That's another trademark of Coach Rush's teams against the zone, driving hard. And then you have Sam Roth, the second straight possession, getting a bucket down low. And that's six for Roth. Nighthawk student section trying to get into this one, but then NU tries to get a stop on defense. Miles Williams backing down Roth. Gets the roll. Good look, little isolation. They knew they had a mismatch right there, took advantage of it. You know, one of Coach Blaine's kids actually plays football for Coach Meraki. I'm surprised Coach Mo hasn't recruited Ivory Miles Williams to play an outside linebacker. The kid looks like a tank. Yeah, Ivory's a little, he's a little thick, thick and athletic. Got a little bounce to him, though, to really get off the floor. Talent Pinkney going to take a break for the first time this evening as we're going to see Charles Elsie out of Tacoma, Washington for the first time. Both teams making a couple of substitutions. It will be NNU basketball as Alley's going to inbound from the baseline. Both coaches getting a lot of players into this game early on. Well, this game is obviously very important to both, both staff, but it's not the most important. These players, these guys need to get some time to get ready for conference play. That was Ivory Williams with the deflection. It ends up in the hands. Oh, oh. Nate Brunel oh. off the offensive oh. glass. Boy, I hope we get another look at that because it happened so quick, I'm not sure what I saw. Holy smoke. I'm not sure Colby knows what he saw. Nobody got a body on Brunel. And nice jumper. Here it comes. Kaboom. Boom! And before his feet even hit the floor, Coach Rush calls a timeout. <laughs> because the Yokes now lead by 12, 23 to 11. My goodness, what an offensive start for the College of Idaho. 9 of 16 from the floor. They hit a few from distance, but right there, maybe the biggest bucket of the night. Yeah, Brunel with 7 now, but you know, the difference might be on the boards. 9 rebounds for the Yotes, and maybe 4 of those have been offensive. The hustle points in favor of the College of Idaho early in this game. You know, the Yokes are a little bit more seasoned so far this year. They've played four official games, but if you count their two exhibition games against D1 opponents, they've, they've played six contests so far. And, you know, one thing about Coach Blaine's team is they are super together. He said that this team, these players, they know the formula to success. They're always positive. They have really tight huddles. I'm going to have more on that a little bit later in the broadcast and the significance behind those tight huddles. But they've also played on the big stage, Brian. They understand the pressures of playing in big-time games that come with playing in the Final Four at the NAI National Tournament. They're showing that experience, that toughness, that confidence early in this game. Well, you know, this is a real basketball program, right? At the NAI level, this is run like a big-time basketball program. C of I has played at Utah State at Utah Valley, so they've got the big time experience. Of course, they've got the postseason play last year. You know, and NNU is a little bit of a disadvantage because in Division Two, you start a month later with practices than you do at the NAI level. And so, see if I a definite advantage, but boy, do they look like a finely tuned machine right now. They do, and you go back to the Utah State game, a top 25 team. You know, the Aggies pulled away and they ended up winning 103 to 66. But the College Rider got a chance to play in a hostile environment for over 6,000 fans against a really talented team. The game I do want to point out, though, is the one they played just a couple of days later at Utah Valley. The Yokes ended up losing by 17, but they really walked away disappointed. They led early in that game. They didn't have the greatest shooting night, but they really competed it right from the start to the finish of that game. And I think that it did give us Coach Blaine's team a little bit of confidence. Speaking of confidence, that's Jalen <laughs> Jalen Fox stepping into a three, and now the NNU student section back into this game. Well, it won't take long with that three-point shot. One or two of those, and all of a sudden you're right back in it. Charles Elsie to the rim misses, but gets fouled. Boy, the freshman plays with a lot of confidence. 
six one one eighty. Went to Bellarmine Prep and home of Washington, my hometown. We'll see him at the free throw line when we come back. The Yotes out to an early 23-14 lead here in Nampa. Welcome back inside the Johnson Sports Center here on the campus of Northwest Nazarene. Hey, Boise State takes on the Lobos of New Mexico this coming Saturday at Albertson Stadium. Join us for the Bronco Roundup game day show as we get you set for kickoff. The pregame show starts at 7 o'clock on Saturday on KTVB. I will be joined by Will Hall on that show, and we are joined by Will Hall right now for the first time this evening. Hey, Will. Hey, what's going on, JT and Kinger? Great to be with you again this evening. You know, just listening to that last huddle with Coach Russ and Northwest Nazarene, the big thing he was harping on on the offensive zone. When the Yotes have their 2-3 zone defense that they've displayed so far in the first half, he wants to work the ball inside out. Don't settle for those yep. tough perimeter jumpers. Make sure to attack the middle of the Yotes zone defense. The exact game plan that Coach Rush shared with me this morning, Will. <laughs> and when that's how Sam Roth has got his three buckets. Yep. A little patience, a little inside out, back inside. The Yotes kind of a little gimmicky defense here. It's a little 1-3-1 zone. They mixed it up. And again, they'll do that about every 10th possession, maybe. They'll just throw something different at them. Worked in, and you confused that time down. With 11 on the shot clock, though, that foul's going to go against Nate Brunel. 20 on the shot clock. Spider out of Tunji. Run baseline, tries to set a screen. He will. They look to get it to Sam Robinson. Instead, they go to Spider. He misses. Zach oh. Ferguson tries to clean up the offensive last. Oh, time. he misses. Spider continuing to fight down low, but it's Talon Pinkney that comes away with it. <laughs> Boy, they had two or three real good looks right there. Uh -oh. Bounce pass stolen by Sam Roth. Zach Ezekiel Elliott pushing. Misses. Sam Roth cleaning it up. Four for four. Layup. The offensive glass has been so huge so far tonight. The Yotes have gotten a couple, but now Sam Roth is fought back on the offensive glass for NNU and provided them with a couple of buckets. Ball poked away, another turnover forced by NNU. Jalen Fox over to Alley. Oh. Misses. Ferguson had it, but couldn't corral it. And now it's Yotes and Talon Pinkney dribbling up over half court. Well, NNU really has had some nice looks from the three-point line, not going in. My guess is they might fall a little bit later. Three turnovers in a row from the Yotes. Jalen Fox to Spider up off the glass. We have ourselves a six-point game. Jalen Fox is a really impressive kid. You know, at high school, he set his high school uh, assist record playing mostly point guard, but in his summer, or for in his AAU team in the summer, played a lot of two guard. So he has a great understanding of both. When you see Ezekiel Alley on the floor, Fox will bump to the two, but when Alley's not on the floor, Fox will run the show and play the one. Alley with the rebound. Here comes the Nighthawks. They picked up their tempo a little bit. Alley with the floater, no good. Offensive rebound. They'll swing it around. This is time to be patient right here. Pull it out. There you go. Get a second look. Inside out. Oh. Roth got a good look from the free throw line. Couldn't get it to fall. I think he was too open almost. Bruno, a crossover, takes it right at Spider. They call it the foul on the floor. The 16 foul for NNU. And a big reason why you hear some chants from the NNU student section is number 32, Gabriel Murphy, checks in for the first time tonight for the Nighthawks. The biggest personality on campus, I'm told. <laughs> and he looks it too, right? I mean, just take a look at him. He's guarding Connor Desanya right now. Desanya going to try to take it at the big man. The fall away. Boy. Gets it to go. Desanya, you know, sucks. really has demonstrated he's more comfortable this year. He was injured the year prior to last. Really got his feet under him, and now you start to see him really taking off. 
Yeah, looks very comfortable. There. You know, he's fit. He's kind of thinned out a little bit. He's in great shape. Looks very athletic. Murphy misses, ball deflects off of him and out of bounds, so it will be T of I basketball. Aggressive man to man. Boy, they bring it. Pinkney trying to drive. They're going to swing it around. Bruner, another three point attempt. This time he misses. Murphy with the rebound. And now NNU pushing. Boy, the ball just does not stand still, does it? Either side, that ball moves. Continuing to move, another C of I turnover. Yeah, good move, good read by Fox. He is active defensively. Ross pump fake drive, leaves it for Reedy. 15 on the shot clock. Ross up and over through Neal, gets in the ball. Boy, Bernil challenged the shot, Ross was Patience, little fade away. Good offensive set. Sam Roth got nine points on four of five shooting. He's also got three rebounds for the Nighthawks. Ball poked away, Reedy comes up with it. Almost another Almost turnover by C of I. Good act of hands by the redshirt freshman. It did go out of bounds off of Reedy. But you can see why coach Rush is so high on this kid, my goodness. Well, the aggressive man-to-man -man pressure fan in here really is starting to get to C of I a little bit. There is, there's no time to get comfortable on offense in C of I. We're going to take you to center court here for the check presentation from United Heritage Insurance. Please give a hand for this contribution. In this same spirit, Tonight is donate a dollar night for the YMCA Strong Kids programs. Going through the crowd right now, YMCA kids with basketballs to collect your dollar donations. Well, there you have it right there. Dennis Johnson of United Heritage Insurance. A great man, always got a, has a smile on his face, and he loves this rivalry, my goodness. I do want to get back to George Reedy here for a moment, Brian, because uh, we've seen him make an impact tonight, but he's going to continue to make an impact all season long for the Nighthawks. Coach Rush basically paid him like the highest compliment almost you could possibly get as a redshirt freshman. I, I remind you, this is actually his first official game right. as a member of NNU's basketball program. And Coach Rush told me this morning that he already projects Reedy as going to be an all-conference, maybe even an all-American guy by the time he hits his junior and senior years. Uber athletic, can put it on the deck. He also put on 20 to 30 pounds over this last year during his redshirt year. So he used that year off to really prepare himself to be a pivotal piece to this puzzle for Coach Rush. Yeah, he's got a basketball body, a basketball frame. Like you said, athletic, 6'5", 190. It's perfect. Now, another thing about that, Brian, it, it's interesting. Coach Rush feels like they got a steal in the recruiting process because he grew three or four inches after his junior year of high school. Ah. And if you look at him now, my goodness. Five on the shot clock. The Yost's got to get something up. Got to go, got to go. No notices. Shot clock. Down. Another turnover by the Yost. The <laughs> Nighthawks have turned up the heat defensively. Come see if I, 2 2 1 press. Might as well count that as a turnover for CFI. Five turnovers for the Yokes, only two for the Nighthawks. Sam Roth, a few dribbles, tries to drive, gets fouled. Sam Roth is going to be at the free throw line. He's going to try to be the first player tonight into double figures. Has nine points. Well, he only averaged six last year. And again, he, he knows he's just going to have to provide that leadership. You know, he shoots the three well. 
He does a good job. He can guard basically all five spots on the floor. But as you just mentioned, Brian, they really need him to take a big step offensively. He stayed in Nampa throughout the summer and worked on his game. And I think we've seen it pay off so far tonight, despite the fact he misses a couple of free throws right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> he comes up with a steal on the other end and gets fouled. I think we're going to walk to the end of the end of the floor here. Actually, we won't. Well, we talked about the three-point shooting by C of I. At one point, they were three of three. They're now three of seven. And then use one of seven. So pull down a bit there. Two-three zone. A C of I. And then you seem to be, seem to be prepared for this. They're going to look to dump it to the high post when they can. Doing a good job of moving the ball. Five on the shot clock. Diaz pulls the trigger and connects. We got ourselves a three-point ball game that closes the night off to Bennett quite some time. Allie with the active hand. Almost got the steal, tried to save it from going out of bounds. Just couldn't quite do it. Boy, again, it's the defensive pressure. C of I does not look like they've seen this before. Check this out. Diaz, Diaz. got some range. You know, he's the guy with his length and ability to stretch the floor. He can provide some problems against this zone. Quick little floater, missed by the yoke. It's Elzy that comes up with it. A foul down low by Reedy. Well, this is really good for the Yotes to see this early. Doesn't look like they were prepared for this much in your face pressure. It's going to be really good to see how they react to this. Time goes to the bench. Derek Wadsworth off the inbound to Ivory Miles Williams who taps it in. Boy, that was a beautiful play. Beautiful out of bounds play. Comes in and you. Trail by five. A quick hand. with the reverse steal. Keep. The layup by Derek Wadsworth. The C of I has got some really good looks on those runouts. Quick steal. They are not afraid to get up and down the court. Six fast break point tonight for the O. Halfway down and out. Ezekiel Alley just can't buy a bucket so far tonight. He's had a couple of good looks. He came close. But he's 0 for 7 to start. Take it back to the, these, these last two fast break points, Rob Bryant. Boy, that's just good guard play. I mean, that is quickness down the floor. Good finish by Wadsworth. What a good basketball game going, James. This is a good, clean game for this early in the season. Yeah. Sometimes in the first matchup of this rivalry, Brian, we do see kind of a stagnant start, especially on offense. But the two teams have gotten off to a great start this season. Jalen Galloway back into the game and he gets the third offensive rebound immediately. The spin move oh. can't quite finish. Boy, he, with the rebound. he deserved that. He deserved that. Had the hustle play. Good spin move. Just didn't go for him. Here we go. Oh, good pass. Ball doesn't even hit the floor after the young create the turnover. Wadsworth with the easy layup. I'll tell you who else is a freshman might give this program. A lot of fun memories is Elzy. He's going to be a nice player. I guess you want to talk about compliments. I was asking Coach Wayne about who's going to be the next Manny Morgan? Who's going to be the next Alan Pinkney? And Charles Elzy is the guy that he pointed to. Another guy that could probably carry NNU for a little while. Red shirt freshman Jalen Fox. He hit his second triple of the game. Well, that was a big shot. Comes the pressure. Straight up, man to man. Wadsworth for three. Misses. Diaz with the rebound. Fox going to run the show this possession. Drives into the lane. Gets into the body of Jalen Galloway, and now Fox is going to get a couple of free throws. <laughs> Coach Play not very happy with that call. Paul feels pretty good about it. Believe it or not, we have already hit the final media timeout of the first half. 
with just over three minutes to go. This bucket by Derek Wadsworth putting the College of Idaho up 32 26. Well, so often in rivalry games, the battle on the board can mean so much. Both these teams have crashed the offensive glass tonight. For more on that, we talked to Oakland Will. Yeah, JT, Colby Blaine preaching to his team in that last huddle there. We got to do a better job of getting bodies on their bodies. We got to do a better job on the glass. They're doing a better job against us when it comes to rebounding the basketball. The other thing he told his team, this is the final media timeout. We got to finish this first half with a bang. We've done a nice job maintaining this lead all throughout the first half. Well, let's finish this first half strong. Such a good point because momentum means so much in these rivalry games. And the C of I has controlled this game so far. You don't want them, you don't want to see them let that slip away if you're a Yotes fan in this matchup. Well, and any of you not helping themselves from, yeah. the free, from the free throw line here. One of four. One needs to go in. Two of five. Okay. Kind of the, the reverse kiss of death there. You point out how bad they are, <laughs> and then they make you. got to go in. We'll give you credit for it, team. Oh, good back cut. Really good cut. I think they drew that up in the huddle. Pass just a little long. Time couldn't quite corral that one. So, a five-point game, NNU ball. The shadow pressure, NNU, CBI back to the 2-3. They've been in zone the entire half. What do you have to do to pull them out of that zone, Brian? Well, you got to get ahead. <laughs> you got to get ahead of them. Offensive rebound by Spider. A new shot clock, by the way. New rule right this here. year, by the way. Offensive rebound. The shot clock does not reset to 30. Resets to 20. That's a new rule at all levels this year. Four on the shot clock. Reading from the corner. Very sick. Two-point game. Boy, that was a good-looking jump shot right there. They try to trap Pinckney. Alley bumps him, gets whistled for the foul. Only the 16 foul for NNU. Check this out, Ryan. Yeah, look at nice kick to the court. He really knows the shot clock's running down. Good high jump shot. Hit rhythm. Looks pretty, good. pretty. 20 on the shot clock here. We tick under two minutes here in the first half. Oh, good cut. Wow. It looked like Galloway couldn't quite corral that one. But they're going to whistle travel. Reedy for the foul. Your take on that. I'll let you take it away. He was either foul or he traveled. <laughs> they called the foul. We're going with the foul. So it's Galloway to the free throw line. He's going to shoot one and one here. The foul is called on the floor. You know, I was just impressed with how aggressively and athletically he cut. You know, we wouldn't have seen that from him last year. He's, yeah, he's really I, shaped his body, yep. become more athletic. That was a, really a big time play. Yeah, and he is going to be a big time player, Brian. You know, at Mountain View High School, he really just kind of had his play at the high school level. So last year was really learning about how to play against this level of competition and also impact the game in more ways than just scoring as he did in high school. We've seen that out of him so far early with a couple of offensive rebounds. Joe scores the turnover. Sam Roth with the rejection on the other end. Boy, that was two or three great plays right in a row. Great steal, great tip, aggressive attack to the basket. Nope. Rob, you feel, like, you feel like NNU is really starting to maybe corral a little bit of momentum here. Right there, that could have been a big bucket. Boy, great play by Sam Roth. Yeah, it could have been a big bucket by Miles Williams, but a big play by Sam Roth there to deny him. And now these teams are still jockeying for momentum as we get set for the final one minute and 45 seconds of the first half. You know, Colby Blaine was talking to his team at the last media timeout. Guys, we need to win the final three minutes and 16 seconds. But so far, it feels like NNU might be winning the final stretch run into the halftime yeah. locker room. Yeah, exactly. The CMI retains possession here, a bucket here. All of a sudden, that play is forgotten about. This NNU team is going to get so much better as the season goes along. You know, we mentioned in the pregame that they lost four out of their top five scores. 
Well, they really lost three out of their top four. Jaden Bazant is another one. He will be back eventually, academically ineligible for the first semester. Thought he was actually going to turn pro and return home to New Zealand. Fell behind a little bit academically. He's taking 21 credits this semester, though, so that he can get eligible for the second semester. He is going to be a huge contributor for Paul Rush once he does get academically eligible again. Yeah, he he, he, he may be the best player on the floor he once be. he gets out there. He is a nice player. And, of course, let's not forget Delvion Jackson, yep. transfer from UC Davis. Kobe Terashima, he has to redshirt this year as he's a transfer but he'll be eligible next year. Coach Rush has some guys that are quietly waiting right now. And once all those guys are available, you will see his team make a big step forward. Traveled, yeah, he did, he did. Well, Coach Rush is, you know, he's putting his stamp on this program, right? It's, uh, it's gonna take a little time. He's gonna get the guys he wants to get. Yep. Uh, the character guys that he exactly, wants to get. Brian. That's really important at this level and it's special for him. He's not rushing this with a bunch of transfers. He finds a couple of guys that are older that he chooses, but he's sprinkling them in with guys he's really developing. As NNU gets the roll, back to within two are the Nighthawks. Well, that defending that high post has been a problem for C of I in that zone. Wow. Tough off-balance shot by time. He misses. 45 seconds to go. We'll see if NNU tries to get a two-for-one here. Little patience. Little patience. Ah, uh, wow. They got away with one there. They'll take it. How about that? A tie ball game, huh? How about that? How many times have we seen this? There's about a two-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. I believe the Yokes are going to try to hold for the final possession. You're so right, though, Brian. So often we see one team jump out to a big lead, and here we are moments before halftime in a tie game. Well, there is no quit defensively for NNU. The little hey. Euro step, and NNU leads for the first time tonight. Pinkney, an off-balance three, oh. <laughs> tries to bake it home, misses. And after the Yoke dominated the first 19 minutes and 40 seconds early of this first half, it's NNU that gets a bucket right before the break. Zach Alley's first shoot of the evening, and now they lead by two. We toss it over to Will, who's standing by with Paul Rush. All right, thank you very much, JT. Paul, you guys trailed by as many as 12 in the first half. You now have a two-point lead at halftime. What allowed you to get back over the hump? Yeah, I think we, we got better defensively, right? And we, we did a better job guarding the three-point line. And we, we're doing the same stuff offensively, attacking their zone, but started getting stops on the defensive end. So we got to be able to do that in the second half. Offensively, what's been the key to your success against their 2-3 zone? Just attacking it, being aggressive. The possessions we've been successful, we've been able to play from the free throw line, been able to play attack in the wing. So we got to stay on that. Paul, thanks for your time. For sure, Will. Thank you. JT, we'll send it back over to you. Well, how about this? A 10-2 run by the NNU Nighthawks going into the halftime. Zach Alley finally get Ezekiel Alley finally getting on the board. And a big time momentum swing here in the final couple minutes. We're getting set for a big time second half coming up next. Wow, more than bragging rights for the basketball team. The baseball teams at the College of Idaho and NNU in a tug-of-war battle. NNU polishing off the Yotes as we speak. But hey, we got to share this with, with you folks. The United Heritage and Insurance Mayor's Cup is pleased to benefit the Caldwell Family YMCA. A group of NNU players recently visited the Y to mentor young kids in Canyon County. Take a look. We're out here today I'm at the Caldwell YMCA, just hanging out with kiddos from around the Caldwell community and from the Treasure Valley area, playing basketball with them, reading books to them, playing foosball, just hanging out and having a good time with them. As basketball players, we are kind of role models to these kids. Um, some of these kids may not have parental figures in their lives, but being that kind of someone to look up to, someone to um, aspire to be like, is a big deal. I think it's important to come out, uh, we introduce ourselves to the kids, uh, they get to see our faces. Uh, many of these kids go to our games, so I think it's important uh, for them to know who we are, get to know them uh, personally a little bit. I just want to play with them, um, interact with them, shoot some hoops with them. 
i think it means a lot to these kids these are great male role models in our community who are doing great things and although they're competitors on the court they're friends off the court and the kids get to see that and they get to interact with the with the players on that kind of terms i feel like just the two tennis playing in this game every year i think it creates uh, a, a big atmosphere uh, the fans from this school come together and just go at each other and just have fun I think it's important just to connect with everyone in the community, not only to build a bigger fan base, but to just also support everyone around us um, as they support us. A very cool rivalry. I think it's something the community can look forward to every year. It's fun to see both communities and past and present players um, take pride within that. You know, one thing that's so cool about these programs is with having coaches that played at local high schools, they have a great sense for community. They are evolving great men both on and off the court, and you saw a great example of it right there. Hey, we have ourselves a game, folks. NNU leads 36-34. We're moments away from the second half tip right after this. Welcome back. It is halftime inside the Johnson Sports Center here on the uh, campus of Northwest Nazarene. Joining me at halftime is Dennis Johnson from United Heritage Insurance, as well as Kelly Lindley, the director of athletics out here at NNU. And uh, the holidays are near, Kelly. This is such a fun event, so much energy. What does this do for your campus this time of year? Oh, we love it. And we love partnering with United Heritage and College of Idaho. It's great for the student athletes and it's great for the Treasure Valley. You have two outstanding academic institutions with outstanding athletics. You know, what more could you want? It's a, it's a ton of fun and we're looking forward to a great game tonight. Dennis, this is my ninth year calling this. I've interviewed you just about every single year that I've been here. Um, why is this so important to, you, to United Heritage Insurance? Well, this is a great event. Uh, I have, this is my 18th year, so we started this in 2001. Uh, at that time, we were doing it at the Idaho Center. Then in 2009, we went to the format that we're doing now, where we do one game in one field house, and a, a week later, like next week, it'll be over at the College of Idaho field house. This is important to us at United Heritage. We love both of these schools. We love Canyon County. This is where our company started in the first place, and this is a great rivalry and the people, and we too love partnering with College of Idaho and Northwest Nazarene University. How, how much more fun is it when these games are on campus? We, we think it's really fun because the field houses fill up, the students are excited, the fans are excited, and, it, and the schools are so close together that they can travel back and forth. So, you know, you have a big crowd from the other school at each other's field house. Kelly, you guys currently have bragging rights. You're going to try to keep them on campus. The job that Paul Rush has done, he's been here for a few years, but this is his second year as head coach. I asked him about culture, and he says that he tries to do it through love. Paul Rush is an amazing man, both on and off the court. It's my claim to fame hiring him. Love that guy. Um, yeah, he does it the right way. He cares about his student athletes and who they are as men, who they'll be as fathers and husbands. And he really genuinely talks about that stuff, and you see it the way they play. Well, we can't wait to see the second half here. The 200 or 207th edition of the United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup second half coming up next. Take a look at some first half stats for you out of the break. The Yotes got hot from distance early, going three of three from distance, but they went 0 for 6 after that hot start. College Vado owning the slight edge on the rebound on the on the boards, and I do mean slight, but how about NNU forcing eight first half turnovers? That's what got them back in the game. How, how, we look at some team leaders now uh, for each of these teams. And Nate Bruniel leading the Yotes with seven. Sam Roth. A team high, game high for that matter, 11 points. And both of these team, these guys, Brian, providing their teams with big energy plays too. Yeah, we talked about that in the open. And Sam especially really brought energy and leadership. And he's he's been the difference maker for N and U. We'll take a look at a couple of highlights. Right here. Pretty simple, Roth in the high post. Nice little step back. All his points came in the paint. Didn't get the threes. And then how about this one? One of the best highlights we've probably seen from this series. Holy smokes, that came out of nowhere. Bruniel just weak side rebound and tomahawked it. Well, you look at that, the Yotes had seven offensive rebounds, led to seven second chance points. We'll see how this one plays out. A tight ball game so far. The second half coming up next from the Johnson Sports Center. 
Welcome back. The United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup Series continues one week from tonight. Be sure to join us next Tuesday at 7 o'clock as the Nighthawks and Yotes tip off the College of Idaho. Game two of the Mayor's Cup featured exclusively on Idaho's very own 24-7. You know, we're just a couple minutes ago in the first half. We checked in with Will, and Coach Blaine emphasized winning the last few minutes. They didn't do that, Will. What has to happen now? JT just caught up with College of Idaho assistant Shelby Lindley. He told me two things. we got to have better transition defense in the second half. The other thing, we gave up eight offensive rebounds in that first half. That was way too many. we got to be more aggressive on the offensive glass, keep attacking them. He also reminded his club, the pressure's on them. They're at home. We need to take care of business, finish strong in the second half. I mean, that might be more of just a, a mental mind game there, but after the lead <laughs> the College of Idaho built, Brian, they led by as many as 12, but they trailed by two to start the second half. Yeah. I feel like the pressure might be back on the Yotes and well, strong here. It kind of feels like that. Momentum clearly changed. That doesn't help right there for C of I. I think these first two or three minutes are really going to tell a lot about how the rest of this game is going to go. Jalen Fox hits the three. A guy that can... Catch and shoot, shoot off the dribble, plays great defense. Comes up big, and now Reedy pushing the other way. Gets into the body of Pitney, misses. Atatunji with the rebound. Hey, you talk about offensive rebounds, those hustle plays. And then you get one right out of the gate here to start the second half. Well, games like this, Jay, these hustle plays really are going to determine the outcome. This is a great take, really. By really good rebound by Spider. Talon just says, give me that thing. <laughs> give me that back. Talon gets tagged with his second foul of the evening. Reedy off the inbound. Attitude cut. Bruder denies him at the rim. Time tries to push, but it's Fox that pokes it away. Boy, no lack of effort by either team coming out of the uh, coming out of the tunnels, that's for sure. Fox, the redshirt freshman out of Las Vegas, Nevada, played at Faith Luther, redshirted last year. But really being introduced to this rivalry in a big time fashion this evening. Yeah, a lot of confidence. He's not shy, not shy at all. He's the second player in this ball game into double, double figures. He's also perfect from the floor. Two of two overall, excuse me, three of three overall for 10 points. But Yost really trying to get it into Connor DeSanya. They're running a couple of pin downs for him. Ball poked away. Diaz has it. In transition, lays it up. They're going to whistle it on the floor. They're not going to give him the bucket. I mean, are they going to give him the bucket? No, on the floor. Okay, on the floor. Good call, I good saw, take. I thought I saw Diaz give a little fist pump as he got up off the floor, thinking they were going to give him the and one. But they call it on the floor correctly as well. So it'll be Fox <laughs> to inbound from the baseline. Another turnover for C of I. The pressure, on ball pressure, really disturbing C of I. Pretty crazy, Brian, because again, any of you isn't even close to full strength. Another offensive rebound by Rock. His fourth of the night. Can't finish. Loose ball, and then you get it. Time for some patience here, and then you. You got two offensive rebounds. Got another 10 on the clock. Yep. Push up. Travel on 3D. I don't think there's ever been a player that's agreed with a travel call, and Reedy is the start. <laughs> It really does kind of feel that the momentum has completely shifted in this thing, and NNU is, is playing harder right now, Brian. Yeah, energy on, on the NNU side for sure. This is C of I's third game in the last five days, though. I mean, definitely fatigue may have, may play a factor in this. Step back three by Pinkney. He gets fouled by Reedy. You know, one thing about George Reedy, I'm told that he goes 100 miles per hour all the time. He probably need to back, back it down to about 70 right there, though. So that's three on Reedy. See, he even ran off the court too fast. He, he was supposed <laughs> to stay on there until he got <laughs> subbed out. <laughs> Pinkney hits the first. This kid's coming off a season in which he was named an All-American. 
one of the best players in program history. He's fourth all-time in school history with 452 assists. He's number six all-time in steals with 184. And when all is said and done, he will likely be the all-time wins leader for the Yokes. Makes all three free throws to pull the Yokes back within two. You know, I, I don't think many people would argue this, but Hal and Pinkney could play at the Division One level, especially maybe transferring out as a junior or senior. But, you know, he has chosen to stay at the College of Idaho and really help build a legacy, leave a lasting impact on this program. And that's absolutely what he's done, Brian. Yeah, he has. And, you know, coming out of high school, Talon, Talon had the opportunity to be part of a Division One program, but the C of I coaches recruiting him told him if you trust us, we think you can be an All-American at this level. Guess what? He's an All-American at this level. He's led them to back-to-back -back Final Four appearances at the NAI National Tournament. And one more thing I want to touch on is that when they were playing down at Utah State, Brian, after the game, the Aggies coaches went over to Colby Blaine and said that they actually had to find somebody else that could stick with Talon Pinckney because Sam Merrill... Their all-conference player, arguably the best player in the Mountain West Conference. Pretty good player. Couldn't even hang with the quickness. Yeah, no, he's so fast. He's so fast. How about this? Where have we heard this before? Another offensive rebound by NNU. Oh, yeah, just a stink in that. They are a block. Galloway again. Every time he comes in, he impacts the game with a really big energy play. Nighthawks lead by three. A nice time for a three if you're a Yoke fan. Hey, Galloway! Hey, how about Galloway for a three? Does this kid look like he belongs now or what? Jalen, let's see what NNU's got here. Well, 2-2-1, two, two, soft press. Back to their zone. Good patience. Oh. Boy, really nice. Nice take by Diaz on that baseline cut. Jalen Galloway has played 10 minutes. He's got five points and five rebounds. Number of hustle plays has been about efficient as he can get. It'll be Diaz at the free throw line for NNU. He hits the first. Gets NNU to that 50% mark, four of eight. The back of free throw line. The back and forth battle begins to pick up. It was tied. NNU back in front. Hits off the front of the rim. Then the backboard and down through the cylinder. A two-point lead in favor of the Nighthawks. We'll see what Coach Blaine does here, but Jalen Galloway's been so good. He's, he's been a guy that he came off the bench so far, but Brian, you pointed him out in the pregame show. He needed to play big in this game, and he has. I wonder if you ride with him a little bit more than you traditionally Boy, would one of your bench I guys. I think that's a really good point, Jay, is why not a little isolation, a little pin down for Jalen Galloway? I mean, he's clearly feeling yeah, he, like this is his game. Yes, he's, he's playing with a guy that he looks like he's feeling it right now. He takes it off the inbound, hands it off to Wadsworth. Wadsworth guarded closely by Alley. Ball poked away. That was Caden Wright that almost came up with the steal. There'll be 14 on the shot clock as the ball stays with the Oaks. Time checks out. Pinkney Tech checks in. The pressure that NNU is putting on the basketball really is taking C of I out of what they want to do. And that's the way to beat it. You got to penetrate. You got to get by it. Kind of a tough pass to handle there. Yeah. Pinkney trying to create. Yep. Maybe should have just maybe threw that one at the rim a little bit. But if they're going to have that tremendous of on-ball pressure, you've got to get by it. You've got to penetrate, break it down, and then kick to shooters. Pick me a guy that can do that. We'll see if he can, though. Ferguson, off-balance shot, hits the side of the backboard. Pick me trying to push. Yotes have been good in transition. Quick trigger Boom. from Wadsworth, and he hit. Boy, I wish I had a stat for field goal percentage in transition for C of I. It may be like six for six. I can tell you this, they're winning the battle of the bench points, outscoring NNU 17 to four off the bench. A good look by Diaz. 
Yo, oh, what a good run. look. You want to talk about transition points, there you go. The bounce pass from Ivory Miles Williams to Talon Pinckney. He lays it off the window. And now we have the Yotes back out in front of NNU by three. What a ball game. What a pass right here by Miles to Pinckney. Just when NNU had all the momentum, here comes the Yotes. My goodness. And we never see these this in these games, Jay. <laughs> never is it exciting. Well, never is it back to back. We had one lead change in the first half, Ryan. We've already had three here in the second half, and we're not even five minutes in. We take it back out to midcourt for another che check presentation from United Heritage United Insurance. Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup. Please give a round of applause for Dennis Jansen and all our friends, Johnson and all our friends at United Heritage Insurance. Well, there you go. The atmosphere, the energy beginning to pick up inside the Johnson Sports Center. I remind you that these were two teams coming off arguably their best season in program history. See if I, or at least recent history, see if I went 31 and 6, went to the final four of the NAI National Tournament last year. NNU won 20 games last year. Really a season of first, Brian, because first 20 win season since 2001. First win ever over a Division I school. It was also their first ever top three finish in the GNAC standings. They picked up their third ever win at the GNAC tournament, trying to build off that momentum despite losing a lot of talent. Will was just in that last huddle with Coach Rush. What do you got, Will? JT listening in on that last huddle with Northwest Nazarene. Coach Rush told me last night he was really excited for this young club with so many inexperienced faces to face a little bit of adversity. See how they handle that. The momentum swings in a rivalry game. He said, this is now our opportunity to bounce back, guys. What Coach Rush told me was that they're really uh, starting to notice that culture has really started to be something they can lean on. There are some new pieces here, but there are a number of familiar faces, and they're beginning to really take over as a player-run program and spread that culture. And a guy that's really doing it, maybe more than anybody, just put <laughs> right there, Sam Ross. Boy, he made that look real easy. Just cleared it out and got to the basket. I guess my point is that despite the fact they have a number of new players, it definitely doesn't feel like they're starting over at all. No, it really doesn't. And, and like we've talked about, they, they don't, they're not at full strength right now. I mean, they've got a couple of kids coming here in a couple of months. They are not at full strength, but they are certainly not afraid. We got ourselves a one-point game with 14.37 left in the first edition of the 2019 United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup. You know, I can tell that the energy's starting to pick up, and so is the intensity. I could hear Coach Blaine talking to his team all the way over here. Will Hall was in that last huddle. Will? See, I don't think you were the only one that heard <laughs> Coach Blaine there in that huddle right there at the timeout. He was preaching defense to his team in a very spirited manner. He's telling his guys, we got to guard up. We got to guard them. We got to be better on defense. He reminded his team, we have 14 minutes left. Let's get this done. We'll see if they can. This is a team that has certainly played in a number of big games. The Ferguson three misses short. Oh, Offensive board by Spider, but it's Bruner that comes away with it. Boy, Spider had a nice rebound right there. He just kind of panicked with it. Good block. Man, these two guys are going at it on each end. It was Bruner that stole the ball away from Spider to our right, and then they go back down there, and Spider stuffs Bruner going up for a layup. Hey, these guys, they're friends off the court, but boy, they bring it at each other when these two teams face each other. Spider is a guy that just does all the little things. Rebounds well, can obviously block shots, and is becoming more of an offensive threat for the Nighthawks. His bread and butter is deep, and he saw it right there on that last block by Bruner. Loose ball Good on the floor. Effort. Spider down on the floor with Bruner trying to get a tie-up. As for Bruner, so Coach Blaine created this stat called Bruno Stats. And the reason why is it's, it's Jake Bruner's nickname. They are all the stats that typically you can't measure. Diving on the floor, getting loose balls. And they named the stat after Jake Bruder. Love it. Love it. He's a perfect guy for that. Exactly. 
And then you might have one called the spider. Boy, good look right there. Good offense. Nighthawks don't get it to go down. LC3 misses another rebound by Ross. We push the other way. As we approach the 13 minute mark of the second half, loose ball time with it. Yo, trying to push up over half four. They've been good in transition. He walked. A little sloppy the last couple minutes by both teams. And for NNU, this is this is a big game early for them. A great time to have a competitive, close basketball game. You know, one thing, I, I mentioned the success that NNU had last year. But Coach Rush said, believe it or not, we really felt like we left some stuff out there and we could have even had a, a better season. One thing he says about this team, they not might be as talented from top to bottom, but they compete, and they know how to battle adversity, and right there, Caden Wright answers the call. Boy, there's one guy on that team you don't want to leave open, and that's him, Caden Wright. That was deep. Caden Wright comes up with the steal. He's going to shoot it again. He's going to shoot it again. Looking for it. Oh, that would have been big bucket. This is just short, tries to chase the rebound. Miles Williams with it, over to Elsie. Time in the corner to Bruner. See if I need to slow down. We saw some good offensive patience by NNU early in this game, and it caught them back into the game. See if I might have to explain, display that as well right now, Brian. Yeah, there's time, time to go and there's time not to go. Boy, that was a big three by Caden Wright, though. Deep. Goodness. You know, when we talk about NNU, we talk about their culture here for a minute. And I will continue that conversation right <laughs> after the break with NNU leading by two. <laughs> The Caldwell Family YMCA is dedicated to healthy living, social responsibility, and youth development. Supporting the Caldwell Family YMCA is a key objective for United Heritage Insurance, the College of Idaho, and Northwest Nazarene University. The Mayor's Cup is pleased to recognize the Caldwell Family YMCA for its positive impact to community here out in Canyon County. Now, I did want to get back to culture and what it means to Coach Rush. These are the, the, the foundations of his culture that he's trying to create. Number one, love each other. It's about sacrificing each other for each other. Number two is discipline. You have to hold guys to a high standard, both as a coach and players. And finally, toughness. It's all about responding to adversity. Rules to live by. Anyway. And that's the point, Brian, in all honesty. That's what he's trying to do. He's not trying to build just basketball players. He's trying to build young men. He said that he developed that formula, believe it or not, as a JV high school head, head basketball coach at Capitol High School. That's where it started for him, and this right now is where he's at in a tight ball game, trying to lead NNU to another victory here in Nampa over the College of Idaho. During that last time out, we had a we heard a, a, another vocal uh, display <laughs> by Coach Blaine trying to remind his guys of their culture and how they're supposed to play. Right. Get on the floor first. You got to win those hustle points the rest of the way. Is what he said to his boys. Yeah, Coach Blaine is just it's the, he and Coach Rush are so similar. It is about culture. It's about preparing these young men for the future. I mean, both of these these institutions are really fortunate to have these two guys running their basketball program. And after that display of passion, Brian, you have Nate Brunel moments later jumping in, getting an offensive rebound, creating another opportunity here for the College of Idaho. There's just been a lot of great hustle plays by both teams. A lot of energy. Well, tip. Paul Six on the shot clock. Down to three. LC for three. A tie up down low between time and alley. Coach Rush not happy at all with that last call. He feels that that should have been an over and back. The ref said that it deflected off of an NNU player though. 
Well, I kind of agree with Coach Russ. It certainly did not look like he I didn't was see the ball rotate any differently or change at all. They were a little bit closer than us, but Here we go. Uh, well, there's that last uh, last shot. Last three. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Yotes retain possession. Two point game. Oh, good play. There's the shooter, got a piece of it. That was Reed that contested the shot of Wadsworth. Got just a little bit of that one. Great effort by Reed. There's no quit in him. Wadsworth looked like he was going to get an open look. It wasn't that open. Wadsworth has had a nice night off the bench. His first miss of the ball game for the College of Idaho. Up and under. Body banging down low. And off the rebound, the foul will go against Sam Roth. But just an unfortunate miss by Felix Wright. Got a great dish, used his body, used the rim. Just didn't get it to go down. Bruner Joe to the bench chance to tie it. Bruner to the bench, Galloway back in for the College of Idaho. Every time he's came into the game, he's done something big. That won't happen this time on the offensive end of the floor as the Yoke turn it over. That's 15 turnovers by the Yoke. Certainly uncharacteristic for them. 15 turnovers with 10 minutes to go. Something that they will have to take care of in order to win this ball game. They almost get one right there. But as Talon Pinkney reaches in, he commits the foul. But Jay, I may, I may regret saying this, but these officials have done a really good job. And this has been a really good basketball game. That is the sixth foul against the Yoke. And the next foul will send NNU to the free throw line. Wow. And that's a foul that's going to go against Sam Rock, his second foul in less than a minute, his third foul in the ball game. So now arguably the best two players for the each respective program on the floor has three fouls. Talon has three and Roth has three. Yep, that's right. Boy, that's a nice move. I mean, Miles it was such a nice yeah. move. You kind of, you just, he deserved that to go in. What I've, a nice play. I've heard about his post game and how good it is. And because he's 225, he can really put his back to the basket and back guys down. Just couldn't quite finish right there. Could have tied it. Instead, the Nighthawks have a chance to extend their two-point lead. Alley for three. Bam. Shot clock was at six. He knew it. Knew he had to take it. Good look. Five-point lead for the Nighthawks. Alley started off 0 for 7 from the floor, but he's hit two out of his last four shots for NNU. Let's see if the Yotes can match. Patience, a lot of time. Good work, Jalen. Oh, good, good pass. pass. Patience. Worked it down to 12. Little basket cut, got a layup. Doesn't get much easier than that. Wadsworth with an uncontested finger roll. Going the other way. George Reedy flexing on the Yotes. And one. George Reedy is going to be one heck of a basketball player for NNU. I like this kid. Showing off the burst right there. In two exhibition games, he's averaged eight points a contest, almost three assists. He's also averaged three steals. Boy, he's got a big motor, too. Plays hard. And he's got about a 40-inch vertical. Holy smoke. Yeah. Coach Rush said it, he is super athletic. I'd still be playing if I had a 40th birthday. <laughs> you don't get those. You, you Nobody might, gets those. Maybe you might have spent a little less time hanging out behind the three-point line. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I'm not glad I didn't. Then. I'm yeah, glad I didn't have a 40th birthday. Wow, that's an athlete. Holy smoke. Again, just a red shirt freshman, too. The sky is the limit for George Reedy. Felix White out of the game. Beto Diaz into the game. Yeah. 
Napier O'Neal tries to go baseline, finishes off the glass with his right hand. And talking about, about athletes, boy, there's one right there for C of I. Really aggressive dribble drive, got it quick to the glass. We'll see if we get a second look at it. He just put it down and said, I'm going to go get a layup. You know, so often with guys, you want to know what they have to do to improve their game. Do you need more from somebody? And Coach Blaine said, honestly, we don't necessarily need more from Bruniel because he already does so much. They just basically need him to do what he does again this year, and they'll be in a very good position. Boy, a couple of very dangerous shooters out there for and you. Speak of the devil, you Diaz. Just, the you could just tell they've had their perimeter team in on that possession. Why not? Why not, Nate? Tries to answer back. Can't. Diaz the rebound. Fox over midcourt. Into the lane. Fox finishes with the left off the window. In an eight-point lead for the Nighthawks, their largest of the game. Seven minutes, 17 seconds to go. And still just applying pressure everywhere. Galloway can't get it to fall. Fox with the rebound. And here comes that in you. Got their shooters in. Ferguson the center of that zone, can't get it to go. And the Yoke can't hold on to the basketball. Out of bounds, off the Ricardo time. The Yoke are being sped up, it seems, at the moment. Under seven minutes to go here in Nampa, the Nighthawks with a seven-point lead. Well, I think you're seeing Coach Rush's team respond like he wanted to see them respond. He knew that adversity would show itself this evening, and after his team trailed by as many as 12 in the first half, they now lead by 7 with 6.44 to go in the ball game. A reminder, these two teams meet a week from tonight over in Caldwell. But right now, the Nighthawks with a chance to keep bragging rights here in Nampa for seven more days. And then you try to maintain the Yokes looking for a spark. 15 on the shot clock. Alley with the basketball at the top of the perimeter. Dumps it down low, and it's Bruner that comes away with it. But it was the right look. They were trying to get to the high post to Roth, and good things have happened when they've done that. This is kind of a time. See if I need the bucket right here. Helen Pickney hasn't scored in a minute. Instead, they go to the red shirt freshman. He can't finish, but he does come away with the loose ball, I think. Yes, he does. Kelsey was going after it. Smartly just kind of let it bounce out of bounds because it was blast deflected off of an NNU player. So, Bruniel inbounds it as the shot clock resets to 20. Whistle under low. Down low. Jaden Wright holding Charles Elsie. That's going to send Elsie to the free throw line. Yeah. What a game, Brian. That's a great what game. What a game. No, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just sitting here enjoying watching this. Yeah. Fantastic. Hoop season started. Kentucky got beat today. I mean, come on. Number one, Kentucky goes down at home to Evansville. Unreal. Elsie makes both. Two pretty big free throws by Elsie. And here comes the CFI pressure. We haven't seen a lot of full court aggressive trapping out of them. It's been more passive. And then you able to break it fairly effortlessly. Alley running the show on offense for NNU. Twelve on the shot clock. And you looks very comfortable out there. Oh, that looks good. Diaz stepped into that one with confidence. Just going to go down. That would have been a big make for you. Got a good look at it. 
five point game, just over five minutes to go. Sonia going at the red shirt freshman. And Turns to the baseline, but misses short. Yotes look a little tired, look a little fatigued. Not finishing plays. Kind of NNU, confident, oh. confident. Kind of feels like a number of body blows by NNU have started to add up against the Yotes. We'll see if Talon Pinkney, the savvy senior, can get his team going. Well, it won't take much, though. A couple of jump shots go down. NNU needs to capitalize on these possessions right now. Strapping for the loose ball right there. You, you, you just saw the College of Idaho huddle. Now, believe it or not, Colby Blaine said, pay attention to the way his team huddles tonight. It was about a year ago that they really put an emphasis on how they huddle. If they are tight and together, it means they are playing tight and together. If one player is kind of slacking off somewhere else, it means they aren't connected. So as funny as it sounds, pay attention to how they huddle in the final four and a half minutes of this ball game. Oh, that's the big man with the offensive rebound. <laughs> Gabriel Murphy cleaning up the glass. He is the fan favorite for sure. Yotes need to answer. Another one rattles in and out for the Yotes. <laughs> Murphy's killing me. <laughs> He's just got the look, too, that why wouldn't you like that kid? You have NNU with 58 points with four and a half minutes remaining. The Yotes have won 36 straight games and they've held an opponent under 60. I have a feeling the NNU is going to crack that threshold, but they're close. Boy, an offensive is CFI. They're getting good looks. They just, they're just not going in. Again, look a little fatigued. NNU getting anything they want. Looks like Reedy stepped out of bounds as he gathered to catch that three from the corner. So a turnover for NNU. We are going to keep it here as we get set for the final four minutes of this game. Brian, it's a seven-point lead right now. If you're NNU, how do you close this thing out? And if you're the C of I, how do you cut into this thing? Well, C of I has got the last four possessions. have been great possessions, great looks. They're just, they're just ripping in and out, right? They're just not finishing the play. But NNU is doing the same thing. Great look, great possession, not finishing. This could be a 12-point game right now if NNU would capitalize on the opportunity. So it's anybody's basketball game right now. A couple of big buckets by C of I. They're right back in it. A couple of keys to the game that Coach Rush gave me today. One was that his team has to pass on taking quick threes. They have to work for quality shots. Number two, keep Talon Pinkney under five assists. How do you feel like they've done on both? Well, I think pretty good. Yeah. And challenge the three-point line. CMI five for 20 after starting three of three. So two of the last 17. And NU has done a much better job of contesting those shots out on the perimeter. And by the way, Talon has one assist tonight. Yeah, I was just looking for that one. Yeah, that's and you know that's kind of his game. Is he's a he's a 10, 12 point, six, seven assist type of guy. But the ball pressure that NNU has put on the Yotes has really been, it's been impressive. Well, Coach Rush laid out the blueprint for his team. So far, they've been able to execute it. But still, 345 remaining in this game. Can the College of Idaho get back into this thing and make a run of their own? Again, good look, good possession, good shot, just couldn't finish it. We're going to walk to the other end of the floor because as Sonia was battling for that offensive rebound, he committed a foul as he's holding down low. That'll be five on the big fella. Connor's going to get to watch the game uh, and get to watch the rest of it. Again, great play by Miles. Just can't finish it. Just a couple big bodies in there knocking around each other. Officials are going to come over here to the scorer's table. 
if they want a, a look at that last replay, I believe. Gathering more information for you guys. So they're going to want to look at the replay of that last rebound to make sure that they have the correct shooter going to the free throw line. I know that Gabriel Murphy was down low. We're trying to see right now who exactly will be sent to the free throw line. These officials are using our monitors right in front of us. We got the shot. And they have confirmed who will go to the free throw line. It will be Gabriel Murphy, the redshirt freshman out of Tracy, California, headed to the free throw line. He hasn't attempted a free throw this season in the two exhibition games that NNU played prior to this evening. Huh. I mean, how can you not like this kid? Look at him. He's just got the look. Watch this crowd go crazy if he knocks this down. You know, I, I think we saw earlier tonight, Brian, actually not long ago, he got that offensive rebound, was able to put it back up quickly. <laughs> Co Coach Rush says that he has great hands and can really finish. When he arrived at NNU, the one thing he didn't have was a jumper, but Coach Rush said that he has really improved that and it's, and it's really progressed. And then in two years, he could be a really big player <laughs> for this program. I should say, he's already, he's already a big, big player. player right. But an impactful player for this program. It's like the student section is kind of you know, giving him a little, giving him a little free throw lesson. One or two from the free throw line, an eight point advantage for the Nighthawks with three and a half minutes remaining. Who do the Oaks turn to here? They played in big games before. Can they steady themselves and find an answer? Not this trip down the court. And Sam Robb has to be closing in on a double double, another rebound. He's had a nice game. Again, he's, he's that glue guy that every team needs. 13 points on 6-9 shooting, 7 rebounds. An efficient offensive effort, still getting those hustle points that he's always provided this team. Wow. A lot of contact oh. down low, but oh. they're going to say it went out of bounds off the deflection by the Oaks. Nine remains on the shot clock. Alley going to be inbounding from the baseline. A little bit of contact there. I think there was a little bit of contact there. Let, yeah. Letting them play with three minutes and one second remaining. Well, you just look at the yokes, the body language. They oh, just look tired. there. Alley tries to throw it off the back of a yoke player and lay it up as he was getting close to a five count. Doesn't go down as a turnover, but it pretty much is the same thing as a turnover. Alley playing tight defense. Gets his hand in there on Talon though. Boy, they fundamentally, they are, their, their ball pressure is just very good. With the foul, Town tried to spin by him. Just kind of grabbed him. He gets a good call. Yeah, they actually called that against Jalen Fox, but it certainly looked like that should have gone against Ezekiel Alley. Yes. That's right. Wow. Alley was guarding him. Fox wasn't close to the ball. <laughs> I got it. Alley, that one they missed. Alley's itching towards foul trouble, though, so we'll take it. Yeah, might be lucky they gave it to Fox. Okay, so the senior steps to the free throw line, knocks down a pair of free throws. I probably don't have to tell you, Talent picked me a phenomenal free throw shooter. Made him in an 81% clip last year. Here comes the pressure from the Yoke. It has been no problem for NNU tonight. They have handled it with ease. Effortless, Brian. Really have, they really have. Again, that, that's just coaching. That's just being organized and disciplined and a lot of repetition in practice. Somebody presses you, that should just be a layup. Reedy's trying to go in, draws the contact. This kid looks like he might be one that can help finish off games like this. Gets into the lane, have a lot of confidence with going to the free throw line right now. Ryan, physically, does this kid look like he's playing in his first official college basketball game? No, I mean, that's just a perfect basketball body. Look at it. 6'5", yeah. 195 pounds. Big motor, 40-inch verticals, got a really aggressive jump shot. No, I have to look like it. 
They lost Adonis Arms last year, the GNAC player of the year, averaged over 20 points per game. They lost Obi Magla, who graduated. He averaged over 19 points per game. Right, those were the one and two scores in the GNAC. And somehow Paul Rush has built, rebuilt this thing on the fly, and they are providing a, a C of I with one heck of a tough challenge this evening. Yeah, this team a month from now is going to be pretty good. It's be a good basketball team. They will only get better as they get healthier and get a few guys academically eligible. Brunil tries to hit Ivory Miles Williams with the rebound and a great pass to Bruner who gets the layup and a quick timeout by Coach Blaine. Six it's point game. Left. I mean, NNU has had plenty of opportunities to take this thing to 12 or 15 points. The Yotes are just hanging around. They're scrapping for their life right now. Take a look at the last score here as the Yotes get a quick bucket off the offense blast. You know, this is Colby Blaine's second year as the head coach out at the College of Idaho. He joined the coaching staff as an assistant in 2014, was promoted to associate head coach in 16, and then was named head coach in 2018. I asked him the difference between year one and year two. He said he tries to trust his guys. Let's take a listen to the huddle. Let's go, guys. Again, both of these coaching staff, it's all about culture. It's all about doing it the right way. They're never going to sell out for anything. They're never going to bring a, a star player in just that they think can win a couple of games for him. If he's not a quality guy, these two guys do it the right way. Yeah, to finish my point about Blaine, he was just saying that he tries to trust guys and stay as calm as he possibly can because he knows he has a talented team that has some great leadership. Tries to put it in their hands. So far, this game is in NNU hands. NNU hands with under two minutes to go. They lead by six. You know, Jay, as a player, I mean, that's exactly what you want, right? I mean, you want your trust. You, you want to have the trust of the coaching staff. And if you don't earn it, then that's on you. That's Sam Roth streaking into the lane. He's headed to the free throw line. Both teams, by the way, are now into the double bonus. A couple free throws here might make it very difficult for C of I. I got to share this note about Sam Roth because it's so cool. We've seen that he's a great basketball player, but this kid is a phenomenal student. He's a redshirt junior, but he's going to earn his degree this coming spring. He's majoring, a double major, in engineering and Chinese. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he's got a brain on his shoulder, a head on his shoulder. <laughs> An air ball. They're going to reward it to the Yoke. Why? They're going to maintain possession. You have both coaches asking for a replay. I think that Blaine is arguing the ball was deflected off the shot, or, or blocked, if you will, off the shot and out of bounds off of NNU. And you have Coach Rush arguing that on that loose ball afterwards, it was off the College of Idaho. So we're going back, the officials are at our monitor court side once again, looking at this play. <laughs> well, I just thought, I can't tell. <laughs> A big call coming here. The officials want to look at it one more time and try to make the correct call. A big call coming here in a seven point game with 128 remaining. I believe they did award Yoke with the possession, but they're still trying to go through every scenario right here. Back up this replay and make sure they got the correct call. But well, Jay was right they're down gonna... there in front of it. Did he see it? I mean, not Jay, but Will. Will was right in front of it. He didn't see it. The officials are still at our monitors right now, trying to confirm who will have possession with just under 90 seconds remaining in the ball game. They now meet at center court. The Oaks are a perfect 4-0 on the season. NNU trying to put their first win in the W column this evening. They played two exhibition games, went one and one. This is their first official game of the season, though. So, 
NNU will have the basketball. They will inbound from the baseline. Colby Blaine voicing his displeasure. <laughs> he back over to like overture of the call. I think one of the officials stepped in the huddle and told him that it was their ball. The other two officials pointed the opposite direction. That is the NNU student section trying to provide a little bit of energy as the Nighthawks try to close out round one of the 2019 United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup Series. They have won four straight against the Yotes here in Nampa, trying to make it five. Five on the shot clock. Roth with the fadeaway. He misses Wadsworth with the rebound. The Yotes have to push. They get some shots up. Boy, Ken, just great defense by NNU. Pinkney from well behind the arc. Misses Spider with a big rebound. And that might do it with 43 point at eight seconds remaining. There were so many question marks heading into this matchup tonight, Brian. I felt like we knew a little bit more about the College of Idaho because they had guys like Jake Bruner returning, Alan Pinkney, Connor Desanye, Ivory Miles Williams, and Nate Bruniel. But we really didn't know much about NNU because they're so new. But what I've seen is they're more athletic than I thought they would be. They play harder than they have in years past. And they've still got two or three kids that are going to play a month from now. This is going to be a I, good basketball game. I feel like centered around Sam Roth, really the one thing we really knew would provide this team with some production. Other guys have responded. Sam has 14 points and seven rebounds. But then you have a guy like Richard freshman Jalen Fox, a guy that is going to be the future of this program. He's got 12 points on four of five shooting. He's three of four from behind the arc. He also has four assists. He can play the one or the two, and we've seen him have success both on ball and off ball for the uh, for, uh, NNU this evening. These guys are only going to get better, and they've looked great so far this evening. I mean, if, if you look at the kids out there now, I mean, there's four of them on the court that can play the one, two, or three. And all three of all four of those. Other than Spider. Spider's a five. <laughs> Spiders are five. That's all that does. He's just five. The other four, interchangeable. Spider can't get that one to go. It remains a seven point game. Hit me drive. A wide open look for the reveal. He misses. Time tips it, but it's Roth that catches it, and Fox gets fouled by Bruneal. Wow, after a hot start from three, the Yokes just can't buy a bucket from behind the arc. They started three for three. They are now two of their last 22 from distance. Yikes. Yeah, that's not good. You're not going to win basketball games at this level not making three, right? I, you know, honestly, I think uh, third game in five days, I think fatigue about the eight or nine minute mark really kind of showed itself. Yeah. Started missing some layup, little body contact, throw some shots out. The Yokes have some time off between this game and the next game. They don't play actually between these two matchups. Meanwhile, NNU will play three games in about a six day span. Uh, they will have a busy week ahead of them. Holy smoke. Well, the table may be turned next week in Caldwell. We shall see. A week from the night, we get round two. Round one, heavily in favor of NNU. Ignore that bucket by the College of Idaho because there's a foul. <laughs> George Reedy walking to the other end of the floor. He's going to go to the free throw line. You, know, you, you can't say enough about some of these guys from NNU that redshirted last year. George Reedy's one of them. Jalen Fox, another one. I was told that Jalen kind of got, quote unquote, big brothered by Obi Negwa a number of times in practice last year. 
but Obi was one of the best in the GNAC. Oh. Is there anybody better to learn under than a guy like him? No. Now what a mature decision by those kids to actually register. Super smart. Nobody wants Agreed. to do that, right? Yeah. You want to play. That's a mature decision. To me, it says that they are program guys, too. Agreed. You sacrifice a little bit now as an 18-year-old, and all of a sudden, you give NNU the shot at having a mature 22-year-old on the court a few years from now. That's a heck of a trade if you're Coach Rush. Yeah. No, I would agree. And you know, look, Even look at the roster for next year. I mean, this team a year from now, holy smoke. Coach Rush building something special out here in Nampa, no doubt. Talon Pinkney able to get a pair of free throws to fall. He's the only Yoke player in double figures this evening, and he has 12. And that might do it. Only kidding, it's a rivalry game, of course. You foul. Yeah. Down eight with 13 seconds to go. You play this thing till the end. They're going to they're gonna play it to the end. And I'll tell you what. You know what I love about this game? The quality of basketball is just much better than everybody thinks it is. It is. This is a high caliber of basketball. Skill level is high. They play their tails off. And I would think next week in Caldwell, that place is going to be packed. If you're a basketball fan, you, you want to be at that game. You got to Just trust it. us. You will love this rivalry game. The chance begins from the Nighthawk student section. With four seconds to go, NNU closing in on back-to-back -back victories over their rivals. They've won five straight overall here in Nampa against the Oaks. Inbound play, corralled by Spider, and that will do it. The Mayor's Cup remains in Nampa for at least another week. They trailed by 12 in the first half. But you can see the final score. NNU wins 66-57. It's kind of a big deal out here in the Canyon County, isn't it? Well, you can't tell me that they don't pay attention to the success that the Yotes have created over the last six, seven years. And the program that they're building and the support they get from their student section. And I feel like NNU right now on every level is beginning to answer the call and mimic that here in Nampa. I, what, a, what a supporting cast here by NNU student section this evening. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. I completely agree. I've had that thought myself. C of I has been a basketball school for a long, long time and a very successful program. And you've always kind of felt that they kind of had that. It and you about to get that. You can see Coach Rush acknowledging the student section. He just walked over here and waved them all onto the court <laughs> as they are about to accept the Mayor's Cup presented by Dennis Johnson. And there it is. Love it. Love it. It's a big deal in the 2C. right there he's all about family and he's got one heck of a one not only at home but also on the court out here in Nampa year number three off to a great start for coach Rush as they improve to one and oh this is their first <laughs> official game of the year that's a heck of a start to begin here 2019 yeah, absolutely. I mean, first game of the year, and you've got this kind of an atmosphere. you got the students rushing. Them. I mean, what a great way to kick off the college basketball season. We also have Will standing by with Coach Rush and his son right now. Thank you very much, JT. Paul, student section rushes the floor. You have your son with you. You pick up the rivalry game. What's this moment mean to you? Oh, this is such a good game. It's the best college basketball rivalry in the state. It's so much fun to be a part of. Um, you know, it's, we're going to let these guys enjoy it. It's fun being on the court with them right now, but, man, we got to get ready for next Tuesday. You guys lost three of your top four scores from a season ago. So many new guys in new roles, and yet you guys win a rivalry game by nine points tonight. What does this win mean to you guys? 
I think it's big for us on the defensive side. We really believe in who we are as a defensive team, and I think it's really big for us on the defensive side to be able to play that way um, and not be able to have all our scoring but still be able to get some stops on defense and, and take care of business with that. Defense, you guys forced 18 turnovers for the College of Idaho tonight. What was the key to your success? And just trying to put pressure on the ball. We felt like if we could pressure the ball, good things that happen, you know, corralling Pinckney a little bit and just trying to keep him from being the All-American that he is. Replacing three of your top four scores from last season, so many new guys, new roles. What did you learn about your team tonight in a rivalry game? <laughs> that our freshmen are pretty tough, you know, that they, they were able to step up. It's great to see Sam Roth, who's done everything for us, step into that leadership, score a role for us. Same with Beto Diaz. Those are guys that were role players last year, and now we're the guys for us. Sam Roth, double digits in points. You mentioned to me yesterday he's got to be one of our leading scorers, take that next jump as a junior and be a leader. How critical is his individual success to your team's success? Oh, big, really big for us. He's he's put in so much work, too, put in so much work this summer over the last three years. That there isn't a higher character guy out there. Um, he's the best. I look up to him. I mean, he's, he's tremendous, so it's fun to see him having the success. Paul, thanks so much for your time. Congratulations. Thank you, Will. JT, we'll send it back over to you. Thanks a lot, Will. You know, you talk about Sam Roth leading the team. Well, he had a game-high 14 points. He also had eight rebounds, barely missing a double-double. But I will tell you what, this team was picked to finish seventh in the 11-team GNAC in the coaches' preseason poll. I'm confident that they will uh, contest to finish much higher than that. Stick around. We wrap up the 207th edition of the United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup right after this. What a scene as the Nighthawks continue to celebrate on the court inside the NNU Johnson Sports Center back alongside Brian King. Final thoughts, Brian. You know, NNU got behind early in this game, but, man, did they show some serious resolve. They put it together, and they really dominated the final 25 minutes or so of this matchup. Yeah, they really did, and it really came back to their ball pressure, their tremendous ball pressure the entire game. They just never gave up and see if I really never got a good look um, at all and so you know that's a Paul Rush team right that's what they do and they did it the entire game and I'm fired up because we're gonna, we gonna do this again on Tuesday and I'll tell you what Kobe Lane and CFI they're gonna they're gonna be ready yeah, to go hey it is hard to win over at the J.A. Albertson's right. Activity Center and I, we should mention they've won four straight over there in Caldwell we'll see if something gives because NNU has proven to be a tough opponent this evening. Cool to see so many new pieces connect so quickly. Brian, can't wait to do it again next yeah, week. Yeah, it'd be great. Lots of fun, Jay. All right, just a reminder, Boise State takes on the Lobos of New Mexico this coming Saturday over at Albertson Stadium. Join us on the Bronco Roundup Game Day Show as we get you set for kickoff. The pregame show starts at 7 p.m. Saturday on KTVB, the official station for Bronco Nation. Can Boise State improve the 9-1? and Also, don't forget that the United Heritage Insurance Mayor's Cup Series continues one week from tonight. Join us next Tuesday at 7 p.m. as the Nighthawks and the Oaks tip off at the College of Idaho. Game two of the Mayor's Cup featured exclusively on Idaho's very own 24-7. NNU takes round one, 67-57, as the Mayor's Cup stays in Nampa for at least one week. For Will Hall, Brian King, and the rest of our outstanding production crew, I'm Jay Tuss. NNU wins 66-57. This has been an exclusive presentation of KTVB Idaho News Channel 7.